Hello everyone and welcome to this new AutoCAD 2019 video tutorial. So today I'll be introducing you to generation of 2D drawings in AutoCAD. So we'll see new commands such as fillet and chamfer, patch. You will also be introduced to projecting drawings, generating section views, using different line types and layers. So I'll open up AutoCAD. So what we're going to be doing first, we're going to be drawing the different parts for a trolley wheel. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to draw say a pivot. I'm going to start by drawing a line. So it's going to be 66 mil long. So I'll type in 66. Let's enter. Okay, so from this line, I will now sketch a polyline or single lines is entirely your choice. So I'm going to start, I'm going to come from this end point. I am going to come up by 7 mil. I'm going to move in this direction by 9 mil. I'm going to open a groove here. So that's going to come down by 2 mil. Now it's going to go in this direction for 3 mil. Now up again until this point. So two mil up. Now thirty four mil. Now I'm going to go down by three mil. And now all the way till the end. So just remember to have your snapping reference lines on. Okay, and now I'm going to press enter. So we've got a section view now. What I can do now, I can delete the center line. And I can mirror this across. So I'm going to type in mirror. And I'm going to mirror it against that one. Got to press enter. Now click at the end, erase all subjects, no. That's it. So we've got our half section view for our spindle. Um, the next thing we're going to be doing is we can chamfer um, these edges. So before that, I will join these profiles. So it's now join. Now I'm going to type in chamfer. Now the first thing to bear in mind before we select the lines, as AutoCAD is asking look at all the options here so we first need to set the distance so you can either click here where it says distance so click there or type in D press enter as you can see AutoCAD is highlighting the letter D in blue 
the letter A for angle in blue, so always um method would be E. Always check what letter is in blue, type it in, enter. Now specify first chamfer distance, two mil, enter, two mil, enter. And now select the first line, select the second line, drop down, press enter again. As you can see, AutoCAD has saved two mil by default, so we can apply it to the next one. And job done. So, the next one to have a look at is this one. So, I'm going to press enter again to execute the chamfer command. In this case, for my distance, I'm going to type in D, enter. I'm going to type in 1, enter, 1, enter. So, this chamfer is going to be 1 mil. 1 mil. So, that's our job done with this one. Um, I can probably. Looks a bit far from my origin, so I'll highlight it. Type in move. Uh, select that point, for instance. Turn on my turn off my ortho mode. And place it maybe around here, a bit closer from the origin. Turn my ortho mode back on. Okay, so let's say that this would be our profile view, but we may also want a a side view. Anyway, um, this would be more like a like a cat section view. So if we're looking at it from the profile, we would be able to see these two edges. So one line from here to here. Uh, another line from here to here, enter, uh, and another one from here to here. So, this is how it would look like from our profile view. So, if we wish to project this, I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to use this endpoint as a reference line. I'm going to use my tracking and move it roughly up to here. And now my circle, my radius is going to go up to that. So I'm going to use the tracking line again. So that's the projection of this feature. Now I'm going to draw another circle. Use this as my tracking. So we have our second line, and now I'm going to again draw a circle from the center. And I'm going to use this endpoint for my tracking, and up to that. Okay. So have you noticed something? If we are using third angle projection, and we look at the part from from the bottom, from this end, from the right. We would be able to see this radius, that's correct, and we would also be able to see the circular face, but we won't be able to see the circular first, the circular face here. So that wouldn't look right. That means that this line should be dashed for a hidden object, and this is where layers go into become handy. So let's start getting introduced to layers. So here are your layers. You can see your layers by expanding this. So at the moment we only have um, three layers. We're drawing a layer zero. So if I go on my layer properties now I can create a new layer. I can, for example, call it pivot. I can now create another layer, call it 
hidden lines. Um, okay, so the first thing that I will be showing you is what these symbols do. So we're not sketching on layer zero. This light bulb allows you to turn the layer on or off. Uh, is this? As you can see, I've turned it off. So now our drawing has disappeared. This becomes handy when you have um, a drawing with many, many entities going on, and you wish to isolate some of them or be able to view others. So you can quickly turn them on and off. Um, this one here allows you to lock the layer, so you won't be able to to see anything. And this one allows you to freeze it. So the main difference between on, off and freezing the layer is that by turning off an, a layer, AutoCAD still um, it just makes it invisible but the line is physically there whereas when you freeze it, AutoCAD temporarily deletes it. So it consumes less less resources on your computer. Um, here you can check on um, the printing, the color of the layer, so you can just left click there and select the color. You can also select the line type, so left click on the line type. Um, that's what we're going to be doing now. So we're going to go on our hidden line, click on line type, and we can only choose between two, center and continue. So I'm going to go on load. I'm going to use ISO dash. And select it, click on OK. And now just make sure that you select it again and click on OK. So now as you can see on the line type it has changed from um, continuous to A cut. You can also change the line the line weight if you wish. So I'll make it thinner or thicker if you want. I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to just leave default. So here you can create new layers. You can freeze um, layers, delete layers, or set current ones. Or you can just do that by applying a simple double click. I'm going to double click on my zero, which is the one that I normally use. And now I will. I will close this menu. I'll select this line and then I will click on hidden lines so it automatically becomes hidden. So the next thing that I'll be showing you, you may think, oh, dashes are too small or oh, dashes are too big. Um, they seem fine in this case, but if you wish to change all of the line type scales in your drawing, type in LTS, which stands for line type scale, press enter. So right now they are set to 0.1. If instead I choose 1, you see the difference. If I select 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 seems perfect at this distance. If I zoom out, it looks a little bit less clear, so I'm going to say 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.3. Looks a little bit better from this point of view. 0 0.25, yeah, that seems perfect. Um, if you wish to only change a line in particular, select the line and open up the properties menu. So right click um, properties or use control 1. And as you can see here, you can change the line type scale here. You can make a point one again. You see, you've seen how it's changed. I leave it as one. Okay, so what's the difference between using LTS and changing the properties? So LTS applies to every drawing, every line in your drawing. Whereas using the property only changes the line that you have selected. So I would generally use 
LTS first and then at the end visualize your entire drawing and if is there a line or a feature that is considerably smaller or bigger than the rest maybe change that line in particular add an exception by changing the properties okay so a lot now center mark like it sh like I showed you earlier center mark here and now I'm going to extend this edge so that's it's fine so that shows the center line of the object and the center mark here so that's all we wanted so we can just add a text item I'll actually use multi-line text call it capital spindle pivot sorry. pivot zip job done so if we move to we move on to the next part we can now do a Wilbush. So I'm going to draw a circle. C enter. So my first radius is going to be 15. Second radius is going to be 9. And my last one is going to be 5. So that's going to be my my will push. So it's going to be hollow in the inside. So this represents the hollowness of it. Um, this represents the rebate or recess of it. So let's carry on drawing. So first of all, if I draw a line. From here, we'll be deleting the line afterwards, so don't worry too much about it. So, line maybe I'll drop from the midpoint here. So, we're working on third angle, so that means that this line should go up to this quadrant. My quadrant is not displaying, so I'll go on my snaps and turn my quadrant on. Going to go up to there. Now, the first thickness is going to be five mil. Sorry, four mil. Then, is that's going to be my rebate. So I'm going to use my quadrant. Use my tracking line. Yeah, six mil rebate, and now it's going to be six mil in this direction. And now I'm going to make sure that my perpendicular is on. So there we go, and press enter. So after on half of it already. Now I can mirror this to the other side. Maybe before I mirror it, I will draw a line from this quadrant all the way across. So that's going to be the hole going through the bush. So I'm going to type in trim, right click, and then delete. And I'll delete this line manually. So I'll select it, type in delete. And now we'll select all of this, highlight it, type in mirror, and mirror it across the center. Erase those objects, no. Okay, so if we were to use third angle projection again, these two lines would be hidden.
So uh, if we look at the object from from the back of it, from this perspective, we wouldn't be able to see this line here, would we? So we're going to turn these three lines into hidden lines. Just notice if we were to look at the object from this perspective, we would be drawing a line across. So that's how it would actually, the object would actually look like if we look at it. So I'll copy this text element, copy it from here for instance. Paste it here. And I'm going to call this Robush. So I'll follow the same procedure, draw a center mark, just so we know where the center of the object is, and extend it. So that's another drawing done. Now we can proceed to draw a wheel. So I'm going to draw my wheel. I'm going to draw a circle. I'll take advantage of this line and track it. So I make sure that my centers are aligned. So I'm going to use 9 mil radius, enter, press enter again. If you don't want to draw more circles, you can use the offset command and type in the offset. So, either way, so I'm going to carry on drawing circles, whatever you find easier. So, I'm going to type in the next one. It's going to be 15. The next one is going to be 44. And the next one is going to be 50. So that's going to be my will. Uh, it's a little bit too close to this object, so I'll move it. Should be okay actually. Um, okay, so let's say if I want the thickness of my wheel to be, let's say, 15 mil. So I'll do, I'll project a couple of lines. For another line here. Now I'll draw another line, so let's say from midpoint to, I'll make sure I'll use snap over right instead and use perpendicular just to make sure that it's perfect, perpendicular. Now use an offset, 15 mil. Actually, that's a bit too thin, so I'll make it 30. So offset 30 mil. Apply it. Now we can use trim tool again. Right click and trim this off. Okay. So let's say that in this case, instead of using a A side view, we want it to use a section view. So, if we, if we were to use a section view, we would then rather, I'll apply a center mark first. Center mark here. Extend it like we did earlier. 
and now we will draw a leader, so type in leader lead specify point so here press enter after uh, first line of annotation text a enter enter that's it we can move the letter if we wish so we can move the letter and place it it would have to explode it. Now move it down. So roughly there. Now I'll join them again. Or group them. And now I will mirror this. Well, if I mirror it, it would be upside down. So what we'll do, I'll copy it from here and paste it here. That's going to be our section. So now we can carry on and project everything. So I'm going to carry on drawing lines. So instead of having to draw each line once, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this line from here and then just paste it here, here, um, that would be enough, I can always mirror this half onto the half bottom and save some time. Next thing I will do, I will join these lines. And now I'll apply another trim, right click, trim these lines, trim these lines, and now delete this. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to apply a center, center line between this one and this one so we know where the center of the object is so let's say maybe I wanted my center of the wheel to have an overall thickness of 13 mil but maybe I wanted a recess around um, the radius so what I can do in this case let's say what I'm trying to explain is I may want my wheel to have um, an I-beam section so I'm going to use an offset of 5 mil. So type 5, press enter, and now I'm going to offset this line. It's not letting me offset it, so I'll just draw a physical line that goes from here to here. So now I can offset it 5 mil. In this direction and in this direction, and I can delete the original. Now I can apply the trim tool again, and I can trim off. Right click and trim off that, 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 and that. So that would be my section. I still need to join it, so I'll type in L. Close it from here to here, enter, just enter again, here to here, enter, here to here, enter, here to here, enter, and then here to here, press enter. So now I will use my blue selection tool just to make sure that I select only this shape and press join. Type in join and press enter. So I have this shape here. And now, because this is a section view, I should hatch it. So I'll type in hatch, pick an internal area, 
I will do, I will delete this line temporarily. Simply because it's on the way for the hatch. I'll type in hatch. Pick an internal point. I'll first change my hatch type to ANSI32. Or ANSI31. Yeah, that looks better. I'm going to pick my internal area. Press enter. And that's my hatch done. So now I can highlight both of them. Use the mirror command. And mirror this across to the other side. Resource objects. No. Set job done. So now I can enter my center line. Between here and here. Um, that's my will done. So I'll copy my text. That's another job done. So now we can proceed to draw maybe the most complicated part, which is the bracket. So I'm going to start by Drawing a line so my bracket is going to be I'm going to turn my ortho mode on so I am going to make a fifty mil long and now it's going to go up by eighty. And now I will close it. What I will do now, I will use my fillet command. So type in fillet. And now my radius is going to be 10 mil. I just thought before I apply my radius, I will first delete this line, join these three, and use an offset of 5mm and offset these lines 5mm. So, as you can see, when you join an area, when you join three lines and you apply an offset, you offset the three lines together. So, you save a bit of time. Uh, now I will draw another line that goes from here to here, press enter, and from here to here, press enter. Now I will draw another line. So L enter. I'll say shift right click from from this point offset fifteen mil actually instead of using from I'll use shift right click temporary track point which is going to be this and I'll type in 15 or you can just use um, the normal tracking so I'll type in 15 so now it's going to go up by 5 mil 30 mil across. 
down to the perpendicular. Um, okay, so we have the basic shape for a bracket. Now I can type in fillet. Um, my first radius, so same as the chain for command, I either click on radius or type in R, enter. So it's going to be 10 mil, 10 mil from here to here, 10 mil here to here. So now if I apply the same, it doesn't look fully right. So I'm going to say R enter 5. And 5 mil. So that looks a little bit better. So now I'm going to draw the other side of the bracket. I'm just checking the dimension first. So it's 50, that's right. So this one, I'm going to use this tracking point, track up to here roughly. The width is going to be 35. And now it's going to go up by 80. And now I'll close it. So now this piece over here is, going, is meant to be 7 mil off the side so I'm going to type in line I'm going to hover over this endpoint move my mouse across so when you can read perpendicular and whatever distance I'm going to type in 7 press enter and now it's going to go up by 5 again so you can type in 5 or you can use this tracking point if you wish and now it's going to go 80 mil across Down by five mil again, and all the way back to the end point. So I've got the basic shape for my bracket. Now I want to draw a few holes. So what I will do, I will type, I will type in circle. So first, in order to define my point. I'm going to hover over this midpoint, um, so I can see my tracking line now, and I'm going to type in 20. Uh, my radius is going to be 5 mil. And now, I will draw a couple of tracking lines. All the way here, all the way here, type in trim, right click, and trim the lines, and delete this tool manually. So I've executed the trim command, select them, press delete. So that's it, we've got our lines now, and our circle. The next thing that we'll do now, I will Select all of these, use my move command, select my center point, use this as a tracking point. So it is now aligned with the center of the wheel and my wheel brush. So I can now start drawing the top of the part. So I know that I draw a few lines, so line, so I draw a couple of lines from here, and here, press enter, another line here.
So I know that this was 35 mil. That means that I have to offset my line by 35 mil. Now I have to offset this line by 7 mil, which was this distance here. Now I will offset this line by 5 mil, or I can just draw a line over it. All of this may be very confusing at first, but it will become second nature as you start drawing more. So now I can apply my trim command, so I usually do right click, trim these lines, trim this line, this line, this line, this line. That line is fine. Just double checking that I've done it correctly, so that should be 35, yep, that's correct. I'll quickly delete these lines and draw new ones. So that was meant to be 80 mil, so I'll draw another line. 80 mil across, now all the way up to here, and all the way up to here. So what we'll do next, I will trim this line, right click, delete and draw a line over it. The reason is that if we were to look at this part from the top, there will be a hidden line. So I'm going to move that line to my hidden lines. I'm going to do the same with these. They're also hidden. And I'm going to delete this too. Okay. So The next thing to bear in mind is these two holes, they will also display here. So I'm just going to copy these four lines. I'll type in copy and then I will say shift right click made between two points this point this point and now paste it in this midpoint so that means that we take a dimension from the center point all the way here 17.5 now if we look at the part from the top Seventeen point five, so that has been done correctly. Now, I just need to make sure that this line is correct. Okay, so here we've got the overall width of the bracket. Now we need to sketch this part of the bracket on top. So I'm going to draw a line from here, intersect it there, 80 mil up, up to there. Mirror it. Right. 
Now I'm going to apply the trim command. Before I apply the trim command, I just need to I just need to check this quickly. So these lines they were drawn incorrectly initially. So I'm going to trim them. Press enter. So what they should be. I'm actually going to trim these as well. Escape. So what they should be. I'm going to stretch them. So highlight the line. Highlight the line. So I'm going to click here. At this point. And drag it all the way to the perpendicular. Do the same with the other one. All the way to the perpendicular. So now when we look at it from the top, these two lines, they would be hidden edges. So select them, uh, make them a hidden line. So as you can see in the projection, this is this edge here. This is this edge here. And now we would need to show this hidden edge here. So I'm going to draw another two lines. Here to here. Enter. Another two lines. Here to here. Enter. And now make them hidden lines as well. There we go. So that's correct now. Um, now we need to get another hole for the pivot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the hole, let's say, 60 mils off this edge. So I'm going to type in C of circle, press enter. I'm going to use the midpoint reference, I'm going to type in 16, enter. And now my hole is going to be 5 mil diameter again. That's my hole. To draw another another two tracking lines. Trim, right click, and delete them. The hole is going through here, so that's why. It's not going to be hidden here. We're going to select them again, make them hidden lines. And now I'm going to copy them from this point. I'm going to use this endpoint as a tracking line. It's not letting me do it. So I'll place them here for now. Hit escape. So I've selected them individually. Now I'll use the move command. Click here. Uh, move them 16 mils. 16. And uh, here they are, exactly where they should be. So we can now draw a center mark here, and a center mark here, and center line here. So I will extend my center line in this direction and I will extend this center line in this direction. So maybe up to here. So that shows um these three projections show all the features in my 3D part. So now I can proceed to draw the next part. 
which is going to be spindle. So this is going to be just a just a rectangle. I'm going to make it seventy. 70 comma 10, 70 by 10. I'm going to move it from this midpoint. I'm going to move it up and align it with everything else. So it's now aligned. And now I'm going to open a couple, two different holes. So going to offset this line by 5mm. It's not letting me do it because it's a rectangle so I'm going to explode it. Now I'll type in offset 5mm and now hit escape press enter again and now my new offset is going to be 3mm. That's done. I can now make it, make these two lines hidden lines and offset this feature, mirror it around the midpoint. Okay. So now I can draw the projection. So I'll draw a circle. Use the midpoint as a tracking line, and then up to here. And now take these two lines, copy. I will say shift right click, mid between two points, then I'll click midpoint number one, midpoint number two, and place them. At the center of the circle, so I've just I just hovered over the circle, so AutoCAD can find the um, the actual midpoint. And now I'll apply the extreme command, extreme, enter, specify the site to trim on. That's it. So my part is now ready. Now I want a small pin to go th to go through each one of these. So I'm going to draw another rectangle. I'm going to use this as a tracking. So my rectangle is going to be three mil by so press comma by twenty. And now that's going to be my pin. So I'm going to draw another circle. From here, now that's going to be 1.5 mil. Oops, first I have to specify the center point. Uh, so I'm going to use that tracking, draw it here, 1.5 mil, enter. Now, in both cases, I'm going to draw a center mark, center mark here, center mark here. Now I'm going to extend the line, extend the line, couple of center lines here, so here and here, and here and here. Uh, I completely forgot about the name, so I'm going to Use a copy command. Copy this. I import them out. Oh, here, here, here. Press enter. Hit escape. Let's so rename this one. Bracket. Pin.
be my spindle or my axle. And now I'm going to draw just a simple washer here. So I'm going to type in C of circle. Use this point for my tracking so it's perfectly projected to it. Because the diameter is going to be 10, second diameter is going to be 20, so I'm going to use an offset of 10. Maybe. Maybe 11. So that should be 22. No, it's 21. So I'll open up the properties. And in the properties, you can always see the radius and the diameter and edit it. So I'm going to edit my radius. Actually, I want it a radius of 11. And I want my radius for this one actually 5. There we go, seems better. And now I can project this over again, so I can draw a rectangle. I can use this point as my tracking, draw it here. And my next dimension is going to go here. It's going to move by 2 mil. It didn't work out because I was using the wrong, so I'll type rectangle again. Use this quadrant tracking. And now it's going to be it's going to be two by twenty two. So recently it went up, so I'll just move it from this midpoint, align it with the quadrant. Turn my ortho mode on and then draw a couple of lines. So you can just draw it from the quadrant and, and trim it afterwards, so you can just use the um, intersection. Then I can just mirror it. Mirror from the midpoint. And now we'll apply my hidden line again. So they're not showing, so I will make an exception with these lines. And I'll edit the line type scale to 0.5 in its properties. So right click and go on properties. So I'll hit control 1. They look a little bit better now. So. What we'll do now, I'll use the move command. Move. Move my parts a little bit closer together. So, this will be it for this video. We've seen new commands, how to project objects, how to apply section views, how to use different line types and different layers. So, in the next video, we'll see a little bit more on dimensioning and presenting your drawings. So, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.